Hey all you cool people, welcome back to Katawa Sojo. Last time, we started on the Rin Path. So let's get it on. It's been a while actually since I've recorded Katawa Sojo. Hmm, need to stop slacking. <clears throat> it's already half past eight, but this morning's class has not yet begun. We were supposed to have physics, but the teacher is nowhere to be seen. I had no... <laughs> had I known this beforehand, I would have slept in too. Suddenly, the classroom door slams open, and Mattel grunts his morning greetings to us from the doorway. Good, m <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I forget everybody's voice, so I end up, you know, making new ones, or at least trying to do similar ones. That was nowhere, nowhere like what the voice I used last time. <clears throat> Matau looks like he has not slept at all. The stumble, uh, the stubble. Stumble, wow. The stubble is messier than normal hair, and the stained dress shirt create a less than favorable impression. I guess he had fun last night at the festival, too. Ex <clears throat> Excuse my being late. Excuse my being late. Okay. I ran into unexpected problems. I'm usually not one for festivals like this, but I hope you all had a good time. After all, these sorts of events are important for all, <laughs> for you all since they give you a short reprieve from schoolwork. The cla mm. The class replies with various degrees of enthusiasm, and Mattel proceeds to take roll and get started. Right then, today's subject is photon particle physics. Ooh, photons, those are cool. Light and shit. Before long, I have descended into a comfortable coma-like state along with the rest of the class. Like Mattel ramble speeches that pass through one ear and exit the other without leaving a trace. Now, who could tell us the solution to this problem? He's written a rather easy equation on the blackboard. Desperately tries to get the class to participate. Nobody? Come on, guys. Nakai, how about you? Unfairly singled out and cornered. I give him an answer. It causes his shaggy features to twist into a gen. <laughs> uh. Genial? Gen. Genial. Genial. Smile. That's a weird word. Uh, that would scare the little children senseless. <laughs> Scares little children, not the little children. Senseless. <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. Good work, Nakai. I'm both disturbed and honored by the fact that he can remember my name. Only one week after I transferred here. From what I've seen, Matao has serious trouble remembering the names of anybody else in the class, and most of them have been here since the first year. The room settles into a dreary mood, students and teachers alike, trying to get back on track after the festival. Man, it's like they're all hungover from the festival. Uh, I figure last week must have been frantic for everyone. Not a minute too soon, the lunch bell rings. The lunch bell rings, yeah. Make way, important business! I turn my head just in time to see another person scatter out 
of the way as someone charges from the far end of the corridor towards the stairwell. It's too late to realize that I'm standing in the middle of a corridor directly in the way of the oncoming human projectile. I try to skip back towards the doorway and unfortunately the person running towards me dodges in the same direction. Oh no, collision! The following fraction of a second, several things come to mind in sequence, yet almost simultane uh, simultaneously. First, I recognize the girl who is in <laughs> is on a collision course with me. It's Emmy! Yay! Second, I realize it feels somehow very natural to be tackled by Emmy once again. It does? I could feel almost comfortable if not for the reflexive panic and terror. Third, Emmy seems to be carrying a foot tall stack of papers while running in the hallway. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, the papers. She crashes into me, but at least the impact was a graze one on a grazing one oh, fuck. graze one now that's a band <laughs> um <clears throat> but at least the impact has a great uh, was a grazing one on my arm this time okay let's see if I can uh, make my vocal folds work here for me ow ah uh, fuck Ow! Yeah, How? Why does this always happen to me? Gee, I wonder, could it possibly have anything to do with you running through the corridor like you were on fire? She whimpers regretfully, look, <laughs> looking like a hurt puppy. The sight makes me regret my snapper's comment. The very instant it emerges from my lips. But I was in a hoey. Oh, yep, there's the voice. I can tell. Sally. <laughs> Sally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. Emmy wails weakly one last time, rubs her forehead as if to expel the ache while her gaze sweeps over the hallway floor. As she notices her neat stack of papers spread all over the floor in one big mess, she lets out a horrific yelp, horrified yelp. Ah! <laughs> ah, the printouts! Oh no, oh no! What am I going to do? The teacher will give me hell if I don't, if they get dirty. They're probably fine. Let's gather them up, back up. It won't be a problem. We quickly round up the papers, and Emmy tries to sort the scattered pile in her hands back into an orderly stack. It, it was. Where are you going? Where are you going? Huh? Where are you going, punk? <laughs> Nowhere in particular, I guess. Uh, didn't want to be left alone with Mattel in the classroom. I don't... I think he has a hangover. I, I wouldn't put it past him. I, I imagine so. Have you not... Have you eaten lunch? Uh. Uh, not yet, but I'm not feeling very hungry anyway. She looks at me incredulously, as if doubting my sanity for letting such a thing out of my mouth. You should go to the roof. I promised Rin I would eat lunch with her. I bet she'd like the company. Like company, fuck. Uh-oh. My lunches with Rin have been remarkably unsuccessful. I know where this conversation is going, and it's hard to not get drawn along. So, I have little choice but to play a ball. 
or joining a baseball team awesome. <clears throat> That'd be interesting if there was a baseball segment to this, you know. Now, how Rin would be able to play baseball is another question altogether. Actually, that she wouldn't be able to, actually, so. Answer found! Yeah. Anyway, okay, I'll go pick up some bread or some. Uh, I'll go pick up some bread or something first. Emmy smiles brightly before I say anything further. No, no! I'll... I'll I'll go to... I'll go and deliver these super quick and then go buy lunch for us. And Rin, too. Of course. What kind of bread do you like? Eh, it's fine. You really don't need to. Don't worry! It's alright. Consider it an apology. I'll be right I'll be back before you know it. Oh my god. You know remember Misha's voice? How that hurt me? This hurts a lot. Doing that voice. <laughs> uh whatever. That's what I'm worried about. Don't get into another accident. Emmy starts walking down the hall, but since she's still talking to me, she isn't watching where she's going. I won't. I won't. I won't. <laughs> I won't. Yeah. I also have, when I'm doing that voice, I have to like put my cheeks in a weird position, like kind of like almost like a pout, like the in inside of my cheeks. Yay. Anyway, famous last words. She's already jogging down the stairs as she shouts that not a not a reassur not so reassuring promise back to me. Sign quietly, I start plodding plodding along her along in her wake, but instead of taking the stairs down, I climb upwards. The stair uh, well up to the roof is unlit and just as creepy as it was before. The door squeaks weakly in protest as I push it open. Ooh. Rin is there too, like Emmy said, lying on her back at the other end of the pebble covered rooftop for some reason. Predicting something unnecessarily strange again, I walk to her as slowly as possible. Yo, what's up, girl? Hello. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's her voice. Hello. How are you? That's great. <laughs> she sounds very drowsy as she says that, scratching the end of the word with a slur <laughs> with a slurred voice despite that her eyes are wide open I look down at her my shadow overlapping her face what are you doing rin rises and uh, raises an eyebrow i i thought you had a heart problem not an eye problem damn just fucking calling you out, Estelle. Fighter. <laughs> uh, anyway, she answers, challenging the rationale of my perfectly valid question without even tilting her head to look at me. <sighs> Rin's smartass comments are infuriating. The worst thing is that I'm not sure if she's doing it on purpose or not. All right then, let me rephrase. Why are you lying on your back on the rooftop? Ah, she gives a lazy shrug and sniffs dismissively. Dismissively. Hmm. I'm I'm trying to experience I'm trying to experience people 
probably don't do this enough. What exactly are you trying to experience here? I can't really tell, but there's probably a reason people don't do whatever. She's playing dodgeball with me again, answering my attempt at small talk with riddles. I don't want to puzzle out. <laughs> but I don't want to ignore her either. Yeah, but the reason is that everyone is too busy with their lives to pay attention to the really important things. Like watching the sky. She hurt. She tears her gaze away from the sky and finally looks straight at me. The per penetrating deepness of her eyes once she focuses them on something is startling. You know, if you were a girl, I could see your panties. <laughs> oh, that's a weird thing to say to anybody. Ever. If I were a girl, I wouldn't come. I wouldn't come this close to anyone who, who, who tried to sneak a peek at my panties. Boy, that is a, that's something weird to say. Like, very weird. <laughs> anyway, I have that much common sense. I wouldn't either, but sometimes it can't be avoided. Like how, f like now for example. To tell you the truth, I don't even really want to pee, I want to peek at your panties. <laughs> Underpants are the soul of a girl. You shouldn't peek at someone else's soul, even if you're not a girl. As a guy, I guess I can understand that. To us, they're some sort of half-mythical object that we can't quite comprehend. <laughs> Man, that's pro that can be a new History Channel show. On the hunt for panties. Hello, we're trying to find the mythical panties. It said that females of our race wear them, but no man has ever seen them before. We're here in, at Target in the lady section. We heard this is the meeting ground of panties. Anyway, I'm going way too far if that's good. Let's continue. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly how I think about them, too. What a coincidence. It really is. So, did you have... Did you have world history in the morning class? I skipped class. To do this? Well, I'm not ex actually doing what it looks like I'm doing. Or at least I think that's what... I'm doing doesn't look like what I look like, but from your perspective. Th that was a tongue twister and a half. I'm surprised that I came out with as many errors as I did. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I skipped class to do this. <laughs> I guess whatever your reason is, it's a uh, as good as any. Giving in to the tired feeling in my legs, I sit down on the roof next to Ren. The pebbles are not the most comfortable bed in the world, but if she can't stand it, then I should be able to, to as well. Uh, what are you waiting for? Hmm? Try it. I bend my neck backwards to take a look where she is looking. The silvery blue sky dotted by herds of cloud sheep <laughs> fills my field of vision entirely. While it's pretty, the view is nothing special, even though 
the weather is fair. I should give a shrug, trying my best to intim <laughs> to imitate the nonchalant manner which Rin seems to get um, seem to have involved seemed to have evolved to perfection and lie down on my back the stones poke at my back through my thin shirt whenever I shift my weight even a little forcing me to keep as still as possible I try to ignore the discomfort in myself instead concentrating on the vastness over us far above the summer clouds drift soundlessly across the dome of the sky neither of us has anything more to say the silence covers the rooftop the subdued noises of students on their lunch break since nods in the trees and traffic buzzing past the school are humming pleasantly somewhere in the background listen i have a a great t I, listen I had a great time yesterday did you <clears throat> did you did you did you did you there we go well to be honest no but it was all right it was probably the longest time I ever sat in one place without doing anything which is kind of impressive I try to make it sound as convincing as possible is it really that impressive? I think it is. I'm usually too restless to do anything like that. I think I I had a good time too. A cloud passes above us, casting its shadow on the school. A chill surges through me from the sudden change of sunlight to shade. I realized that summer is not in its full bloom quite yet. The only measure of time passing is the slow pace of the clouds moving towards the town. The stray beams of golden sunlight leak through the gaps, blinding me for a moment whenever they hit me directly in the eyes. The blue sky looks so unreachable. This reminds me of the time I spent in the hospital where I was bored out of my mind on a daily basis. Somehow I didn't it didn't matter after a while. I learned to appro um, appreciate other things besides watching TV and gossiping with people I didn't even like. A comprehensive sensation of calmness spreads from my sight to my other senses, finally hitting my brain. An airplane zooms by, leaving two thin contrails in its wake, like a pair of chalk lines drawn from up one end of the sky to the other. I wonder where it is heading to. The low din of its engines carries all the way down to my ears, although it's barely audible over the racket from the quad. It's nice. Oh, and I could do a better voice than that. It's nice. It's nice. There you go, I guess. It's nice, but I don't understand why this is more important than going to class. Isn't it, isn't it good to do something like you like every once in a while? Of course, but... What are you doing? Nemi has snuck up on us without either, either noticing and is only a step away from me, holding several packages wrapped in plastic film in her arms she leans forward and peeks over me overshadowing my face almost exactly the way, same way i overshadowed uh, that fuck uh, same way i overshadowed rin before 
I wonder how weird this looks. The two of us lying on our backs on the rooftop. Mm, that's what I asked too. <laughs> I would be more concerned about what you're doing if I were you. I wouldn't come that close to people who were who could see your panties. <laughs> oh, you fucking serious? Hmm. <laughs> Emmy's voice in a scandalized, but she quickly takes a step backward, pressing her hands against the front of her skirt so abruptly that the parcels of bread she was carrying fall. I quickly avert my eyes and glance angrily at Rin. She pretends not to see me. Heh. <laughs> hey. Hisao isn't like that. Hisao isn't like that, right? Hisao isn't like that, right? Right. And my boy Hisao ain't no porvo. He is a gentleman. Like me. A gentleman. That's why I play these games. Or read this... Shit. <laughs> um, Emmy scowls at Rin and crouches down to pick up the packages. Hmm. She wipes the dust off them and skips hmm, lithely, lithely around me to Rin's other side, where she sets herself down. Anyway, here's your bread. Sorry it took so long. That's alright. Thanks for treating me. I pull myself up into the sitting position and gratefully accept the bread Emmy is offering. All three of us are rav <laughs> ravishly dig into the simple meal. The bread is surprisingly decent and readily fills my stomach. I follow the corner of my eye, the skill with which Rin handles her bread between her feet. I haven't seen you on the track in a few days. Oh, right. I feared it was too heavy of a routine for me to start with. So you've been doing something else? I've been considering my options. She frowns. But doesn't pursue the issue further, for which I'm thankful. <laughs> Emmy seems pretty headstrong, and I wouldn't really want to get pestered by her about this on a daily basis. I have enough burdens to bear with Suzune and Misha already. Uh, you guys remember uh, remember the last you know story? Suzune and Misha? That's a that nice story. Ah! We barely finish our lunch, uh, the lunch before the bells ring, calling us back to our classrooms. Oh, fuck. Speaking of Misha. Um. Keychan! Oh, fucking Christ. Misha waves at me as soon as I enter and starts talking before I even make my way across the classroom. How was your how was your festival? Did you have fun? Um still somewhat undecided on that. I'd say probably. Why? Wahaha! Just asking, just asking. Her eyes glint in a way that tells me she's not just asking. I can't even start to guess her motives, though. As the well-timed entrance of the English teacher prevents us from talking further, Misha falls back to Plan B. Oh, shit. I... I was... I was there all day with Seachan. We had a lot of fun. Uh, weren't you supposed to be doing work? 
Don't worry. Everything went really well. 